Brilliant, this Hangout on Air is live this February 11th, 2015, and chatting with a colleague and virtual friend here. Uh, we've never met. This is our very first screen-to-screen -screen, uh, salutation. Uh, Zoltan, can you introduce yourself to the world? Yeah, thanks very much, Ron. Indeed, we have never met in person, but we we have been corresponding quite a while on, on uh, tourism issues, protected areas, and I think we share uh, a passion towards uh, uh, the protected area issues, uh, visitor management, or, or and, and probably uh, sustainable tourism or responsible tourism. So thanks for inviting me and represent uh, um, the European Wilderness Society, which I'm I'm the chairman of now, uh, currently. So my name is Zoltan Kuhn. I am uh, a Hungarian citizen, uh, a father of four kids, and I'm really passionate about wilderness protection uh, with a special focus on Europe, which might sound really strange to some people, because most people would associate Europe with cultural landscape and not with, uh, with wilderness. Um, by education, I'm a forester, forestry technician, uh, which means that I know how to log trees and how to uh, shoot animals uh, if I want. Uh, sorry, and uh, and then I studied landscape architecture. Um, I used to work for WWF and then and Penn Parks, and since one and a half year now, I am the chairman of the European Wilderness Society. Is this is this a proper introduction? I hope so. Well, that's a proper introduction. Okay. <laughs> rabbit holes to go down. That's great. Um, give me a give me and the people who are watching a basic introduction to to uh, European wilderness. You, you're right. It uh, when we watch um, documentaries and travel programs, well, on this side of the Atlantic, you know, it's uh, almost exclusively about city travel. And you know, don't get me wrong, I love the cities. Uh, but if one wanted to visit some of the parks in Europe, tell me offhand, what are three of your favorite parks in rural areas that you would recommend people visiting? Yeah, uh, first of all, of course, here today I'd like to promote the work of the European Wilderness Society. So, as you said, uh, I, I also like city travels. Yeah. So again, don't get me wrong. I, I like to visit cities sometimes, uh, but as I said, my passion is really with wilderness. So I can recommend a few places even close to my my home. But my favorite places where I either frequently go back or would like to frequently go back: uh, Slovenski Rai in, in Slovakia, which is uh, Slovakia, uh, Slovak paradise, I think in English that would be the name. It's a national park almost in the middle of, of Slovakia, relatively close to my home. I live in Hungary, by the way, uh, so I only have to drive like four hours to, to this national park. And I like that uh, it's, it's gorgeous and, uh, and, and the river system or stream system that it has. Um, I, my, my, my second favorite would be, uh, again, it's relatively close, is the Tatra National Park. It's, it's a cross-border national park between Slovakia and and Poland, and the reason why I like it because I, I I'm able to go back really frequently, and that's where I, through one of my colleagues, uh, Vlado Wanchura, I learned most of my knowledge about how to experience wilderness and how to actually enjoy wilderness, and how to enjoy being away from the the ordinary, so to say. So that there is no electricity, no running water no lights during the night, so that's that's a beautiful place. And um, my third favorite, it's, it's, a, it's an area in Russia, and I know on Monday, uh, Elena, uh, another speaker, was talking a lot about Russian protected area, Polistovsky, which I, I also would like to visit. I have never been there, but I know the director, Mikhail. Um, so but my third favorite area is, is, is Panayari, which is, again, a cross-border area. Um, between Finland and Russia. It's the Russian Karelia uh, area. And what I really like is that once when I was there, that's, that was the place where I really experienced that I should walk days and days to get uh, uh, 
human, uh, the sign of human existence. And I think that's also important for most people that once in, in your life you really have to experience uh, that you are out. <laughs> and and, and uh, I mean out in a sense that even your mobile doesn't work and, and you, you somehow are away from the uh, normal daily hassles. So, and, and I remember when I was standing on, on the top of the hills of Panayari and uh, I looked around and I have no sign of villages or, or logging or, or electric cables or whatever. And that was just beautiful. It was really touching. It's a personal experience. So they, these, these three that I would mention, there are many more, of course. And, and there are various other areas where, which I mean, truly feel it uh, in Sweden. And I, again, referring to the Monday speech of Elena when she was talking about a, a lady who cooks really well. Um, I, in Fulu I, I know a, a guy who used to be a chef in the Soho in London, and then he was fed up with the with Soho, with the artists and whatever. He decided that he would like to get his retirement in the middle of nowhere. So he opened up the Soho Fulu uh, which is a restaurant and a very basic accommodation. But he only serves people with food if they stay in his accommodation. And I, I also love Fulu Fjellet. So. There are many more. I just picked up three, randomly. Of course. Well, the, you know, the next time, the next go around, we'll have our five-hour parks and tourism hangout. But you know, <laughs> today is just like a, a plate of tapas. You know, just a little appetizer, share plate, and uh, we'll let people know about uh, about these issues. And as I say, from you know, from this side of the Atlantic, we don't hear about European parks. Uh, so here is my other question: as a European. Are parks managed more or less in the same way in Europe, or are they greatly different? Do we see the concept of tourism in parks kind of similar across countries, or are there, you know, very um, great differences among how locals appreciate their protected areas or how people travel to parks in other countries? <laughs> this is a very, very difficult question. And, um, um, my first response would be that no, the park management practice in Europe, I think it's very different. And also the attitude of people towards protected areas is also very different um, to, to the United States or maybe to the uh, uh, Parks Canada. I cannot really speak, I cannot compare uh, with Mexico or uh, with, with Latin American countries, to be honest, because I've never been there. Or, I mean, I was in Mexico once or twice, but not really uh, on, on, uh, on business trips. Um, but there, there are various issues here. Europe, you said Europe. I mean, Europe as such doesn't exist uh, politically. It exists geographically, of course. It's a continent. But Europe is 50 different countries, or 50 plus. You never even know how many countries we have because we are uh, we tend to re-establish uh, or establish new countries, and we are tend to separate nowadays things again. And uh, so, as legislatively, uh, you cannot really say that uh, uh, the park management in the UK or park management in Hungary are the same, it's, or not even similar. The structure of protected area management is also very, very different, uh, which means that, of course, the management practice of visitor management is also very different uh, in, 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 in the various countries. So there is not a really unified approach in Europe. Uh, and what I think you have to recognize are the people across the water have to recognize that the US I think, t together with Alaska, States, as large as Europe. Yeah, so Canada is probably even bigger than Europe as a continent. So, no, no comparison. And going to the other issue, what is the attitude of people towards protected areas? Um, Europe, the Eurobarometer, which is a kind of European uh, organization doing opinion polls of various issues, from how satisfied you are with, with the cars, and how, how much you, you are concerned of biodiversity, uh, they frequently make analysis or opinion polls about the attitude of Europeans uh, or the citizens of the European member, 27 or 28 European member states, 
on environmental issues. And it all, the, we as Europeans, again, we do not exist as Europeans, but we as Europeans uh, are really concerned of, uh, of the environment. And we, are, we believe that biodiversity loss is a shame and we have to do something about it. But it's like, you know, we believe someone has to do something, but no one is doing anything. Or <laughs> if, you, if you get get the point. Uh, so You know, it reminds me of that cartoon uh, I saw on Facebook this past week, at least in Spanish, where the politician addresses the crowd and says, who wants change? And everybody raises their hand. And then the politician says, who wants to change? And all the hands are down. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you, I think you can compare a little bit. And of course, there is a big difference. Uh, no, going back to, so we are concerned about the loss of biodiversity, uh, but we don't really know the protected areas. Uh, or maybe we know the ones that are in our own country, but not outside uh, the other countries. That's uh, outside our own country. So if I would ask someone in Hungary, uh, mention Hungary and protected areas, they, yeah, they probably can say, five, three, five, I don't know, roughly. Uh, I'm 100% sure that most people wouldn't be able to mention all the 10 national parks we have. And when it comes to Austria, and if I would ask, okay, mention an Austrian park, which is like, I mean, for me, Austria is closer than Budapest. Uh, and uh, there are people living along the Austrian border. I, I can hardly imagine that uh, most people would say any single protected area. Yeah? Of Austria, and that's why that's when it comes. Are we European? Are we living in Europe uh, legally uh, or uh, legislatively? No, not really. Uh, we live in our own small or bigger country. It depends on which country you live. So we are concerned of the biodiversity, but we don't really have a clue where this biodiversity is, where it's protected. And I had a friend, a colleague from the Netherlands, who said. If we don't know something, then we will not love it. If we don't love it, then we will not care of it. So it's it's that that issue that I think it's the biggest problem of protected areas currently in Europe. They are unknown, and therefore people don't really care. So if a politician decides, politicians tend to like opening up, designating new protected areas because that's you know I checked something on the paper, I established a new park, hooray! But when it comes, did you provide enough funding to manage it? Did you provide enough funding to protect it or preserve its value? Then no action is taken, and of course the people are not really concerned because they don't know the areas. So that's uh, and uh, and I will finish talking. Sorry if I speak too much, but um, I haven't even drunk yet. But you know I have my I have my small panic here, but I haven't drunk yet. Um, so that. And I would like to make now a link to the, the whole issue of responsible tourism or responsible travel, uh, because that's all about the week that you arranged. Oh, wait a uh, second, wait a second. We're, we're, okay. I'd rather not chat about that yet until you do cheers me. <laughs> and tell, uh, Please, go ahead. You, you're, you're certainly not going to get tipsy on that. Okay, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I will take my panic. <laughs> that's, called, that's called panica. Panica, yeah, it's a kind of schnapps, or uh, you know, you would drink whiskey in uh, Scotland or Ireland. We drink panica here in Hungary, uh, made out we of food. Uh, you know, you have to recognize that there is nine hour difference between you and me. So uh, it's I'm off working hours. I usually don't run drink in working hours, and uh, what I mean, the way how I understand hangouts that we are sitting in a bar. We are hanging out and we are chatting. Is that the? That is I hope perfect, that's right. That's a perfect analogy. And why that? Okay. Okay. Um, I should I should have opened up a bottle of wine even, but anyway, that's next time. So well, next time. Going you know, back to the response. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, honestly hold, wait a second. Hold. Uh, <laughs> honestly, it would be fun to have a, a, a happy hour, responsible travel hangout um, around the world. And um, but you know, my my thinking is, you know, when we created responsible travel week now seven years ago. The whole idea was to make this a little bit more lively, a little bit more fun, and as well as really to connect to literally food and drink. Because you know, far you know, I don't know how many boring conferences you've been to, but you know, I've been to far too many. And honestly, the more stimulating dialogue often occurs, you know, at the uh, at the co uh, during the coffee hour, during the coffee break, 
it's what uh, Harrison Owen found out when he was creating open space technology. You know, could we get people to be comfortable and then to discuss some of these issues? So if your conference is, you know, 50-minute boring chats with people reading at one another, followed by 10 or 15 minutes of engaged conversation while drinking coffee and eating biscuits, or over at the bar having a, having a beer, then, well, why wouldn't we head over to the bar? So, you know, cheers. Uh, one, I would like you to, to touch upon responsible travel, and my big question is this. Outside of the, your work colleagues, does anyone in Hungary talk about responsible travel? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I know a few people uh, who are concerned, but uh, maybe I, I used to have a colleague again when I worked at uh, Worldwide Fund for Nature, uh, who was uh, in charge of fundraising. He, she then became uh, a regional manager of tourist promotion of one of the region in Hungary. And she was now trying for 15 years to set up a kind of criteria for system, criteria system for checking uh, quality of uh, rural accommodations. And uh, her success was zero. <laughs> so my, uh, she's really the, 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 uh, one of the few people who talks about this issue. Yeah, at least publicly. There are two or three. Uh, tourist companies in Hungary that um, really, I would say, successful in, uh, in arranging, uh, let's say, nature-based travels or sustainable travel, but um, they are more, I suppose they are more busy with running the business efficiently and this kind of more theoretical discussion on how to put theory into practice is, is not really happening in Hungary, at least not as far as I know. How would you translate yeah. Responsible Travel Week in Hungarian? Felelős Turismus Hét. Is there a difference uh, between travel and tourism? Would you say Turismus? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean travel means, uh, literally, I think it means utazás. So the travel, at least again, I am not uh, an English translator. So if there is a someone who is really good in Hungarian and English, I, I hope they will apologize to me. But my interpretation is the travel is ex actually when you leave point A and you arrive to point B. So it, it's at least that's the Hungarian kind of way how I, I would understand it. And tourism is a much bigger word uh, and has a much bigger meaning to me. So if I would, I mean, responsible travel in a sense, it's a very strange wording. And yeah, I have to correct myself. The proper translation would be felelős utazás hét. And, and again, uh, travel is not, it doesn't mean tourism. Tourism is bigger. Right, yeah? exactly. Travel does not mean tourism. It's one of my, one of my friends from Oaxaca, from Teotihuacan de Valle, Hugo Santiago. You know, as often said, you know, you, you don't have tourists, you have visitors. And because there, there's a translation in Zapotec for visitor, but there's no word for tourist, and there's no word for tourism. So if you want to explain this locally, you have to, you know, be much more careful about your language. Whereas, again, our academic or our policy-orientated discussion has um, you know, a very good understanding of tourism. But we don't know how to actually explain it to the visitors. Uh, I think, again, if I translate these two words, the visitor and the tourist, uh, there are two different words. And I think, again, that's only my personal connotation, and I'm not a ling linguistic expert, but uh, I, would, I would say that a tourist is certainly a person who would come to an area, visit it, and then leave it while a visitor might be even a friend. A visitor would be someone who comes and leaves as well, but uh, I, I would say that it's a much more friendly word. And, uh, yeah, if I, exactly. I, I don't know whether I... I think we're, we're on the same page here. And so and if I wanted to visit Hungary, and let's just say that I had one day to visit Hungary, what, you, what are you going to promote? 
Uh, whereas if I said, all right, let, give me a week in Hungary, where are the places that I would visit, and who are the people I would visit? I think we can, you know, that to me is responsible travel, is the basis of it. You know, if we can slow down and really encounter the place and the people. Do you want me to give recommendations now? Yeah, give me a, <laughs> give me, give me a, I mean, just spitball it. What's a one week, what would you, what would you suggest? No, I'm, you know, of, of course I'm kind of biased of the region of where I live and, and personally I'm more a mountain man or a man who likes hills or hilly areas than, than flatlands. I'm also not a bird watcher. So I, I know that a lot of people would come to Hungary, they would come for the pusta, you know, the open, uh, uh, great Hungarian plain and maybe to see birds there like the great bustard or, I don't know, crane migra migration and that kind of stuff. My recommendation would be slightly different. Uh, if you come for a day, again, if you would visit me as a visitor and not as a tourist, again, remember that's a friendly word, I then you. You, would not, you would not go to Budapest. I would so say, okay, come to Jör, uh, the town where I live, and then I will show you Jör, uh, which has a better baroque downtown area. Then I would take you uh, to Panonhama, which is about 20 minutes drive from my home, uh, which is a World Heritage Site. They have a nice uh, wine, uh, how do you call it, a vineyard and uh, winery. You can do a little bit of walk in a more natural area. It's a landscape protected area. So in, in one day I would show you the maybe lunch there and then take you to Panonhama where we would have a uh, tasting of wine and show up in, in the forest to look around the landscape a little bit and then I will put you back to a train. <laughs> and say goodbye. And come so come by train. So come by able, train. So we're able to combine vineyards and parks in Hungary. Vineyards and parks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you all have to remember that Hungary is a beautiful country. Yeah, uh, and I, again, I love Hungary. I, lo I mean, it's it's a country which has probably I would I, I always argue that the best location. It's relatively flat, so we uh, we don't have severe weather conditions. The soil is really good for agriculture purposes. We have good vineyards. We have nine traditional wine area, um, and uh, if you are at the right place, you can get friendly people as well. <laughs> uh, so. Parks and wine. That's the Balaton upland area, uh, which is uh, you don't. I don't know whether you know. We have a large lake called Balaton, and the northern part of the lake is is a hilly area, which is a special wine area. They have small wine regions, even within of the one big big region, where and then you can do walking. You can uh, explore a geopark. Uh, if it's summer, you can swim in in the lake. Uh, you can drink wine. It's a perfect place. That's that's where we always go on with Mondays for a long weekend with the family and friends. Beautiful. It's obvious you you love Hungary, and uh, again, I think that's a better promotion than most uh, tourism videos. Uh, a shout out to Susan who um, who is uh, watching online, letting us know that, and she's figured out how to use some of these so the social media. So thank you to our viewers. Um, can I ask you, Zoltan, to um, click the screen share and share with me? Uh, the website you want to uh, yes uh, um, this one yeah I wanted to show some do you see it now not yet if not click, yet uh, share there oh are. yeah okay share and uh, yeah that's my face and uh, that's the website yeah all right so this is the European Wilderness Society. Obviously, uh, as I said, I'm here not to promote Hungary or not to promote myself, obviously, but I, I try to promote Europe's wilderness and the wilderness society. So basically, that's the website of the organization, and, and uh, I was about to get to making a link between the fact that most European protected areas is unknown and uh, how tourists can help. I really believe that one way uh, to improve the protection of protect, uh, uh, or preservation of protected area is to show it them to people and, and uh, let them enjoy, let them experience uh, 
Europe's wilderness areas and uh, Europe's nature. So this is not, uh, tourism is not really the central element of our organization. What we are trying to do with the society is uh, designate, manage, and promote Europe's wilderness areas. Uh, One second, can you take us a tour, on a tour of the website? What, what would a, a, a traveler look at at this site to find out some of these tips? Yeah, uh, we have, uh, of course, we have uh, lots of different news, so you can you can get uh, maybe search here uh, for the word tourism or travel or whatever, and then it, it will take you to the uh, interesting site. But if you check it out uh, on the top, there are the wilderness areas, and then there is a European map, and uh, we are, yeah, I don't know whether you will see it on the website, uh, Currently, it says there is a wrong message, but th there should be a map here. Yeah, okay. The certified wilderness areas. Uh, uh, then my computer is somewhat slow, but there will be uh, small dots at the different places. Uh, potential wilderness areas where maybe restoration activities has to has to be done. And remember that now my computer works very slow, but normally there should be dots at the different uh, uh, sides. Yeah. Okay. And okay. what we also do... One second. One second. Let me ask you this other mm -hmm. question. You scroll down a little bit. You also have a Twitter account? Yes. And that's yes, well, I mean, social media. Social media. Uh, we are going to different places. What with the society we do, uh, again, remember that we started this website uh, only 14, 14, 15 months ago. And we have passed 100,000 visitors uh, a few weeks ago. We got roughly 300, 350 people now uh, a day. So we have a really effective communication team behind. I mean, I am just like uh, a, a person who is put in, in, in now behind the computer to speak about the society, but we have a very, very strong communication team. We are doing a great job on, on, on you know, doing publications. Like recently, we, we came out with a magazine which is designed for kids about uh, the large carnivores of Europe, the brown bear, uh, lynx, and the, and, and the wolf. And, and that's, again, a, a really important. And this magazine was outstandingly uh, welcomed by, by the people. Yeah? And as per uh, the social media is concerned, we have a Twitter account, uh, EU Wilderness. Uh, we, that's the uh, after at EU Wilderness. And then we have a Facebook account, uh, and we have a LinkedIn group. Uh, the LinkedIn is more for professionals, of course. Uh, li uh, on Facebook, we are more uh, promoting nice pictures as well and, and, and news items too. And apart from our website, uh, there are two more websites that we are managing. One is called Wilderness Academy. This is what you have we can see now on, on the screen. Uh, wilderness dot academy. Uh, I just love even the title of the uh, or, uh, or the domain name because it says everything about the purpose. We are trying to have uh, a training opportunity for uh, people who are interested in wilderness protection. And we had the first event last year uh, in Mitterzil in Austria. The next one is going to be either in Romania or again in Austria, uh, like an annual event. Uh, it's, it's just brilliant. And then we have another website, which I, I, maybe my colleagues will hate to mention this now, but uh, it's the wilderness-travel.org. Uh, so that's, that's a travel website, but to be honest, we are not promoting it now really effectively because because we are trying to focus on, 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 on other issues within, within our work. But that's once we give uh, uh, a little bit more promotion, that website will be a source of information for visitors. Yeah? Beautiful. Well done. What, what Let me ask you this. How many members does the society have? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a, I, I, I don't know. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, we have about 4,000, 3,500 3, people who are receiving our uh, newsletter every two weeks. Then we have uh, a flick, uh, how do you call it, flip, flipboard uh, account, which is followed by about 200 people. Uh, how many people pay the membership fee? I, 
I, to be honest, I don't know. I, I am not updated many, with the figure. How many people are actively working with you uh, to develop? We have this? we have twelve people. If uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we have twelve people. Um, and again, it's I'm just now someone who talks about on behalf of these eleven people, of course. But we and a good. I I just love the team as well because the people who are around the society and who work now with me, they are all really senior. They are in, in their position, in their knowledge and the way how they act. We have a person and, and we are international. That's that's another important aspect. We have a lady who is uh, a German living in France. We have a lady who is American living in Madrid. Then we have a Slovakian colleague. We have uh, uh, German uh, colleagues living in Austria. We have Austrian colleagues living in Austria and then a Hungarian living in Hungary. Uh, so it's it's just beautiful. And we have even an Australian uh, uh, colleague who is now on kind of leave because he just got a, a, a new boy and he wanted to enjoy uh, uh, the, the kid for, for a while. So, But he's an Australian. He used to work for Wilderness Society in Australia. He now lives in Vienna. I mean, can you imagine uh, how good and, and how to say it, uh, uh, interactive culturally this team could be from four, three different continents, uh, all concerned of one issue? It's, it's beautiful. Hey, let me ask you a, a favor. Can you click the window, the tab you have open for Twitter notifications? Yes. And, and then That's here, when, uh, can you click where it says RT, the hashtag RTWeek15? And again, Zoltan, many, it's great to meet you, and, and many thanks for participating in Responsible Travel Week. Um, today, it has just gone gangbusters. Um, so, I don't know if you're paying attention to this, but there are so many wonderful examples around the world of uh, people doing good things and uh, taking on some fairly provocative topics as well. So, you know, thank you for contributing to this dialogue. Yeah, uh, we have to be thankful of people who, who follow, either online or, or whatever. And uh, yeah, I think it's a, you know, it's a great thing to organize this 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 hangout. Uh, also, even for me, I mean, you you asked me about Hungary, and uh, I mentioned how international team is, and I'm probably the simplest person in in the team in a sense that I am a Hungarian. I have Hungarian wife, and I live in Hungary, so this is not really international. Uh, in a way, uh, that's one of the reasons why I love to attend in meetings like like even this, because it allows me to to talk to uh, other people from other country. It, it allows me to promote a little bit Hungary as well, and I hope that uh, whatever bad uh, image Hungary might have nowadays in in, in the globe. Uh, that's that's only an image and that's not really true. So hey, can uh, I, you, I, I enjoy. Well, then, excuse me. Can I ask you to uh, take away the screen share and uh, yes, see again. Um, no, I think that's uh, that to me is one of the wonderful things about these hangouts is that we can you know see what's happening across the across the ocean and uh, see what other people are doing. Um, and for me, you know, in terms of planning a trip or even helping promote a, a region, it's just incredibly uh, invaluable to be able to hear from people firsthand. Um, one of the things that I've been developing, and you may have seen it, is a Google Doc, uh, and it features all of the social media channels for uh, official park websites. And in the past couple of years, the United States has taken a great lead that you know, the Grand Canyon, for example, has a Twitter account, has a Facebook, has a Facebook page, same with Zion. Um, are we seeing European parks use Facebook or use Twitter directly? Uh, yeah, I came across with quite a few parks on Facebook, yes, uh, I would say. Uh, Twitter, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I, I don't think they really use Twitter, but Facebook, yes, uh, I have seen Austrian, uh, Swiss parks, uh, Slovenian, uh, some Hungarian parks. So I think I think that's 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 increasing. Yeah, um, and it goes especially for uh, for sharing you know pictures or whatever uh, events probably. 
but um, I know that in the US, you, I mean, you even mentioned, I think, on Monday, Instagram, uh, there is Flickr, there is uh, Pinterest, and whatever. There are so many tools and social media platforms that you can easily get lost. And the reason why, uh, with our society, we decided to focus on this free because we didn't want to lose for uh, attention. Yeah, I mean, the management of social media sites could really uh, occupy a single person for a whole day, to be honest. Yeah, uh, because even the various social media platforms are a very useful inform uh, information source. I love to get, uh, for instance, research uh, news through Facebook, there is a, a Society for Conservation Biology, and they have really good uh, uh, news items on research news. Uh, so, I, I just what I wanted to say: if if a protected area decide that okay, we are going to become active on on the social media platform or more, they have they have to remain focused. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And, I agree completely. And again, the only request I'll make of you is uh, in the near future is to post any specific links. Or you can share uh, the, the the Facebook group or page on our RT Week event page. But I would like to create kind of an, a global index of what parks are where on the social web. And you know, you don't have to be everywhere, but where you are, you have to be you know fully aware and conscious and figuring out how it works for you. Um, uh, here's another quick question for you: Did you go to the World Parks Congress? No. No, 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 no. But uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Catherine, uh, she was she was in Sydney. She was in Sydney, and uh, yeah, she came back really enthusiastically. She said it was a great event. Uh, but yeah, you yeah, know, we are in this sense still a small organization. We didn't manage to send uh, more than one person. But I don't know. Uh, have you been there? No, I uh, certainly I didn't. Ha I couldn't afford it in terms of time or money. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Which is why. Uh, which is why I encourage them to do as much as they did uh, online in real time. At least we could, at least we could participate and watch a little bit. Yeah, you know that actually in Europe, um, because Sydney was kind of far away for a lot of European, uh, and uh, to be honest, I don't really know how many Europeans attended the World Parks Congress, but there will be a follow-up event, uh, which is called the Little Sydney, uh, close to my home in Heinburg in Austria, uh, in the Donau National Park. And our society, again, we, we were fortunate enough to get an invitation to take part in the organizing committee. So we hope that uh, we will manage to sneak wilderness in a little bit and, and uh, uh, also wildlife in a sense that key, keystone wilderness species will be discussed during this event. Yeah? So when is that event? At the end of May, uh, the last four days of May. Oh, I'd like I'd love you to post the news, the dates, and the, the link if you have it. Um, if you go up uh, on our website, and I, what I have to do now because I learned how to share uh, screen. If you go up uh, on our website oh. and see this, and then you type in the search engine "little little Sydney," and um, and you should see it. Little Sydney, protecting Europe's nature. Here it comes. <laughs> so we do we do the promotion. We do our best, and that's that's why I said we have a brilliant uh, uh, communication team because they they do a lot of stuff technically, and they also teach us the ignorant conservationists <laughs> how to do communication better. <laughs> Which is, I think it's very, it's very important. Have you heard whether there's going to be a European ecotourism conference this year? Yes, uh, the third ecotourism conference is going to happen at the end of April uh, in Poland. In Poland? Yes, yes. And uh, again, do I have to share it uh, with you? I just got. Uh, you probably know there is one guy uh, who, whose name is going around Europe when it comes to tourism and protected areas and social media. Uh, I guess you already know whose name I'm going to say from Estonia, uh, Ivar. Ivar. Ivar, yeah. So he's the guy, <laughs> he's the guy who uh, was sending me uh, this information actually. So again, let me put it here, the screen is shared. That's Ivar uh, from Estonia. 
and he just said the third European Ecotourist Conference, Euro Eco 2015, that's the hashtag. It's going to be in Poland 27 to the 30th of April. Beautiful. We'll copy and paste that somewhere. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I don't know how to do that, but I will. Uh, I will. I will put it. Uh, you know what? I will do a tweet. Please, uh, please. We're gonna wind that. We're gonna wind this uh, down right now. Um, but you know, we'll do more of this stuff offline. And for the people who are watching uh, from other parts of the world, uh, we will be focusing uh, on European wilderness. Uh, and featuring these events on the Planeta site and the Planeta Wiki, and we'll be tweeting about this uh, happily. Um, one last question uh, is Susan from Susan is asking, uh, do you know if any of your databases uh, include uh, work on endangered species and wildlife crime? Not not on our not on our website, but uh, we are actually. <laughs> On Monday, the day that one of the reasons why I was not able to attend your event on Monday, which I, 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 I for the other people who are listening to us, you should know that uh, about two weeks ago we started, or three weeks ago we started Chorus Responsible Travel Week, and he was, you were wondering uh, which days I would be interested, and I said day one and day three. Day one I was not able to attend because I was take, taking part in an event. Uh, we are developing a research program uh, or project for the Carpathians where uh, we want to look into uh, effective and sustainable ecological restorations and part of this will be to actually merge all of the existing databases of red listed species and habitats. And this information of, in Europe is of course more or less available. I mean Europe is a relatively civilized and very researched continent so to say. Uh, so, for instance, in the Cape Eighteen, there is a special list. Uh, there was a project called Bioregio Project, and th they created a list of uh, red, uh, red listed species and habitats. I also heard from one guy that the, the same list exists for the Pyrenees. Um, the, the problem is how you can get these databases together. We are, for instance, now working on uh, setting up a searchable database of wilderness areas of Europe that will be accessible on our website. There is a database, but it's hidden somewhere uh, on, on a site, and what we are going to do, we are make it, we are going to promote it and make it more searchable than it is now. Yeah? Beautiful, beautiful. Well, as I say, uh, beautiful. hope that answers your question there, Susan, and uh, you know, what, what uh, I would stress to you uh, is that you know, if we can copy those links and figure out where to paste them, uh, we can in, we can change the information from being kind of sheltered in a silo to being much more of an open access type of environment. You know, I'm getting also old, so I have to apologize. But uh, nowadays, I can only concentrate on one thing, do, doing one thing. Now I'm doing the speech, and occasionally I do one or two tweets, <laughs> but uh, I cannot do copy paste now. I'm, I'm getting too old, yeah? Uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you how to do it and uh, I'll show you where you can put it on the Planeta Wiki at least. Uh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. We can make sure that, that uh, that's a good hub for information. It's the only one? No, but uh, I'll help you out there. As, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually we have yeah. we have Planeta Wiki. Uh, yeah, we are out. Okay. And we'll start, <laughs> you know, now that you got this hangout under your belt, you, we'll, we'll, we'll chat this through and we'll figure out what to do with it. Uh, okay, we're going to wind the chat down now, and Zoltan, I'd ask you to stay online after we finish the broadcast, uh, but is there anything you'd like to say publicly uh, to the people who are watching this about Responsible Travel Week? Any final comments? Um, experience wilderness in a very short way and become a supporter of wilderness conservation. Whether you are in the U.S. or, I mean, across the ocean or in Australia or in Europe, but that's the two things: experience in wilderness, and then became a supporter of wilderness protection. I think that's the that's the final word, and that includes a little bit of traveling, of course. Otherwise, you cannot experience it. Well said. Well said. Well, thank you very much <laughs> for your time, everybody, for watching. Thanks for watching, and thanks for your questions. And check us out tomorrow. We will be doing our hangout on day four of Responsible Travel Week. Cheers. And cheers.